Hello everyone, Noxious here with another installment of my series, Machine Spotlight, where we take a close look at some of the new and returning machines found in Horizon Forbidden West. In this installment, we'll be shining the spotlight on the Clamberjaw. The Clamberjaw is the very first machine designed after a primate, specifically a baboon, with defining characteristics including its strong protruding mouth with massive canines, its concussive sacs resembling large cheeks, its blaze sacs resembling its ischial calocytes, and its agility. Also like baboons, they are always found in small troops. It also borrows its unique prehensile tail from other members of the primate family, like the spider monkey. Clamberjaws are one of the smaller midweight machines and are members of the acquisition class. You can frequently find Clamberjaws among dense forests and old world ruins scavenging for resources using its specialized resource scanners. And they can even be seen digging out resources from the ground using their forearms and tails. They even scavenge parts from other downed machines, ripping them apart using their powerful jaws. Clamberjaws tend to hoard all their resources in large scrap piles, with the largest found in Cauldron Chi. In combat, Clamberjaws take advantage of their agility and immense strength, making them a frustrating adversary on harder difficulties. In this video, I will cover everything you need to know about the Clamberjaw, including its locations, weak points, combat strategies, and more. If you find yourself enjoying this video, consider subscribing and hit the like button so that more people can find my content to enjoy. Let's start this video by covering the Clamberjaw's locations on the map. There are a total of four marked machine sites, and I have managed to find an additional two unmarked sites. The first marked site is in the Redwood Forest, just south of the greenhouse and east of the Tanakh settlement Tides Reach. Here you can find a group of Clamberjaws as well as a few Red Eye Watchers. The second marked site is in the Jungle Hills, just north of the Far Zenith base. Here you can find three clamber jaws along with a couple of acid bristlebacks. The third marked site is further west in the hills above Cauldron Chi, which just so happens to be the cauldron where you can obtain the override for the clamber jaw. Here you can find a small troop of clamber jaws with no other machines in the area. The fourth and final marked site is located in the heart of San Francisco. Here you can find a few clamber jaws scavenging inside of the old world ruins. The first of the unmarked sites is located directly north of the Tanakh settlement, Falls Edge. Here you can find some clamber jaws playing in the stream with no other machines nearby. The second unmarked site is in the abandoned treehouses near the stand of the Sentinel's Tall Neck. Here you can find a couple of clamber jaws playing house, with some stalkers lurking on the ground. I wonder if they're raising an abandoned human child. Tarzan in Horizon 3 confirmed. Next, we'll take a look at the machine catalog entry for the clamber jaw. Fire clamber jaw, a level 21 acquisition midweight machine. A fierce and agile scavenger that uses its claws and tail to salvage scrap. It clings to walls with ease and uses powerful fire attacks against enemies. It is weak versus purge water damage and strong versus fire and plasma damage. Notable loot includes Echo Shell, Blaze, Metal Shards, Machine Muscle, Medium Machine Core, Clamber Jaw Circulator, Braided Wire, Clamber Jaw Primary Nerve, Metal Bone, and Sturdy Hard Plate. Now we'll take a look at the machine catalog entry for the only other variant of the Clamber Jaw as of now, the Apex Clamber Jaw. Apex Clamberjaw, a level 34 acquisition midweight machine, a hunter-killer variant recognizable by black and gold armor plates and purple wiring. It can launch acid attacks and has been modified to be significantly more deadly. It is weak versus shock damage and strong versus purge water, acid, and plasma damage. Loot remains similar to the regular variants with the addition of a 54% drop rate for Apex Clamberjaw Heart. Another key difference to note is the replacement of purge water canisters where the regular variant sparkers would be. A little easter egg possibly hinting towards future DLC is a single dead Frost Clamberjaw, which can be found at the Clamberjaw site near Tide's Reach. This would make total sense, as the Fire Clamberjaw's blaze sacks mimic a baboon's red buttocks, while the Frost Clamberjaw may have chill water sacks that mimic certain baboon's blue buttocks. Only time will tell if we see this variant in the game. 
Now let's study the Clamberjaw's weak points so that we can exploit them in battle. A single resource container lies on the Clamberjaw's chest protected by a metal plate which serves as a storage container for valuable resources. Remove the protective plate, then tear it off to collect its contents. Two sparkers rest just above the Clamberjaw's shoulders, acting as shock storage. Tear them off to collect the resource, or shoot with the well-aimed shock arrow to detonate and inflict the shock state. This is invaluable if you're looking to farm specific resources from the Clamberjaw. More on that later. Two concussion sacks line the Clamberjaw's cheeks, which power its concussive attacks. Destroy them to disable these attacks and to cause a powerful explosion. Two blaze sacks make up the Clamberjaw's signature red cheeks and act as blaze storage powering its fiery attacks. Destroy them both to disable fire attacks and cause a fiery butt explosion similar to what happens after eating too much Taco Bell. A single tail duster is located on the end of the Clamberjaw's tail which acts as its primary salvaging device. It uses it to coat the ground in noxious gas, it wasn't me, as well as pull resources from the ground to throw for a ranged attack. This noxious gas will prevent consumption of food and potions for a limited time. The tail duster is also a key upgrade resource for certain gear. The best way to harvest the tail duster is by first immobilizing the clamberjaw by shooting its sparkers with shock ammo, then tearing it off. Otherwise, it is quite difficult due to the machine's speed. Finally, a primary resource scanner covers the Clamberjaw's eyes and acts as a scanning device that quickly detects underground resources as well as shields the machine's eyes from damage. Detaching it affords you a 75% drop chance for Clamberjaw Circulator. Next, let's familiarize ourselves with the Clamberjaw's range of attacks. The Clamberjaw is quite agile, jumping around the battlefield like, well, a monkey. Watch out for the Clamberjaw's signature ranged fireball attack. Here you can see it using its tail duster to spread noxious fumes. Dodge to avoid the AoE damage from its ground pound attack. The Clamberjaw is one of the few machines with a uniquely animated attack, the Yeet Force 3000. It can be avoided with a well-timed dodge. Watch out for its close range claw slash attack. Here you can see it using its prehensile tail to pull up scrap from the ground. It then uses this scrap for a ranged noxious attack. With its resource scanner removed, it can use a flash attack that can temporarily blind you. A well-timed dodge can prevent this as well as the effects of its concussive screech. When it's mounted on vertical surfaces, watch out for its deadly pounce attack. Take what you've learned in this video and you'll be able to become Prime Ape in no time. The Clamberjaw can indeed be overridden and is immediately unlocked once you complete Cauldron Chi. I will now demonstrate overriding a Clamberjaw in the wild. We'll set it to aggressive and then see how it does against a regular variant and an Apex variant together. After almost killing us, it's back to business. As expected, the regular variant is the first to fall. Followed closely by the Apex variant. Apes together strong, reject humanity, return to monkey. That concludes this installment of Machine Spotlight, where we took an in-depth look at the Clamberjaw. Let me know what you think of the Clamberjaw in the comments below. Do you think they'll introduce the Frost variant in future DLC? I personally find the Clamberjaw terrifying. I think it's because of a local story of a terrible chimpanzee attack back when I was a kid. Apes are just frighteningly strong. Look up Mo the Chimp if you dare. On top of that, clamber jaws are pretty annoying to deal with when farming tail dusters on higher difficulties. I do think it would be pretty cool to have a heavyweight gorilla based machine in the future to go toe to toe with the slaughter spine. It could be like Godzilla vs Kong all over. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Horizon Forbidden West content including the rest of my Machine Spotlight series. As always, I'm Noxious Asp, thanks for watching.